Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Cross again, and I'm going to give you a lesson for grades 2 through 5 um, this Sunday. And I missed you again. It's, it's a lot more fun when I can talk to you and we're sitting around the table and maybe eating our snacks and I'm hearing about your week. But um, once again, we're all sheltering in our homes and it's a good thing that God gave us homes. And last week we talked about... Um, how Jesus said, don't worry, because God is in charge, and God is taking care of you. He made you, and he takes care of you. And just like the lilies of the field, the flowers, I wore my, my flower sweater this week to help you remember that just like the beautiful flowers in the field, God made you, and he takes care of you, and he will give you the things that you need. Um, if you trust in him. In fact, that was our Bible verse last week, Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well, Matthew 6, 33. So let's talk about that just a minute. It says, but seek, that means look for his kingdom, God's kingdom. God's kingdom is wherever God's in charge. And we already know that God is in charge of everything. So there's nowhere we can go that God is not in charge. God is the king, so we call wherever God is in charge his kingdom. And he is going to be in charge of everywhere on heaven and earth forever. So God is our forever king. So we're going to look for God's kingdom and his righteousness. So what's his righteousness? His righteousness is what we get when we trust Jesus to be our savior, to forgive us for our sins. So when we look for God's kingdom, his forever kingdom, and we ask Jesus to be our savior, then we don't have to worry because God will make sure that we have the things that we need to be cared for and safe and to be part of his world, part of his kingdom forever because he's always going to be in charge and he's always going to be powerful and know everything and take care of us. So that was what we talked about last week. This week, we're going to talk about God's kingdom again because it's a very important thing to learn about. Um, and we're going to talk about it in a little, in two stories that Jesus told that are called parables. And a lot of times Jesus would talk to people in parables. Um, a parable is a story that Jesus told that would help people understand more about the kingdom of God, more about um, God's rule on heaven and earth. And so today, I want you to get your Bibles and maybe a pencil and paper and crayon, something that you could read or uh, write or draw with. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about treasure before we get going in our Bible story. You see this bag with an X on it? One of... Virginia and Russia's, my grandchildren's favorite game that we play together is find the treasure. And so we like to make an X because X obviously is where hidden treasure is buried. And then um, one of us hides the treasure and the rest of us find it. And we look for where the X is. So I have a treasure in my bag, and it's something that is valuable. It's something that um, I think you would think is valuable, too. So think about it for a while. See if you can think what my buried treasure is under my X marks the spot. Think about what makes something valuable to you. It might be something that costs a lot of money. It might be something that's very, very useful to you. It might be something that other people might want too. So it's something that um, gives you social value. Other people might want it. 
Hmm. What do you think it could be in my bag? Well, it's something that I think you'll think is pretty cool too and that we all really want to have today. Yep, it is my cell phone. I think a cell phone is a pretty valuable treasure in the world today. A cell phone costs a lot of money, not just to get originally, but then to keep up every month. Um, you have to take good care of it. You can't drop it in water or you can't lose it. You have to take good care of it. That makes something valuable. Um, other people want it. I really think most people today in our culture, in our city, want a cell phone. I can't, I can't, all of my kids wanted a cell phone as soon as we would let them have one. Probably you guys want a cell phone as soon as your moms and dads will let you have one if you don't have one already. Um, a cell phone is useful. Um, you can look information up on it. It has a map so that when you um, are lost, you can find where you want to go. Um, you can keep your friend's phone numbers and addresses in it. Um, it's fun. You can play games on it. You can do social networking on it. Um, what else? You can talk to people on it or you can text people on it. So it's a really good, valuable way to communicate with people. It also makes you feel safe, I think, because um, if you're out and you need a ride home, you can call your mom and dad or your your brother, big brother or sister, they can come and get you. Or if I'm driving and um, I get a flat tire, I can call somebody to come and help me. So treasures are things that are valuable in all kinds of different ways. They make us feel important. Um, they give us information. They uh, might cost a lot of money. They are things we want to keep safe and close to us. I don't, I know I always check for my cell phone when I leave the house. Um, and they make us feel safe in some way. I think, I think most treasures make us feel safe or they make us feel good about ourselves in some way. But today we're going to talk about what Jesus says a treasure is. Because in the Bible, Jesus doesn't say um, a treasure, a cell phone is like a treasure. That's not in the Bible. So go ahead and get your Bibles, and we're going to open them to chapter Matthew chapter 13. And then um, I'm going to pause the video, and we'll get ready to open God's Word together. So open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, and you can find verse 44. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. So you can, you can find it that way. Um, I'm going to set the scene for you a little bit. Jesus is once again talking to a large crowd of people because people love to follow Jesus and hear what he had to say. This time there were so many people um, that he couldn't sit on a hill like he did last week and talk to them. Um, he had to go out on the lake this time and get in a boat and sit. And the people were on the shore and and up the hill listening and and watching Jesus as he taught to talk to them and he taught as I said earlier in parables um, to help them understand because a lot of times stories do help us understand better so he's going to teach them about the kingdom of heaven or another word for that is the kingdom of God and um, we already said that the kingdom of God is forever. Um, God is king. And God is king anywhere he is. And God is um, omnipresent. He is everywhere. So God is king of all of heaven and all of earth. You cannot go anywhere where God is not king. God is king um, whether you're in school or at home. And he is pre he's king um, whether you're awake or asleep. And he is king when you grow up and get married and move away or whether you're um, 
away at college. There is nowhere you can go where God is not king. And that means that once you have asked Jesus to be your savior and um, to forgive your sins, then you are always part of God's kingdom. And there is nowhere you can go where you are not in God's kingdom. So these uh, parables that Jesus said are for you when you're part of God's kingdom. So in Matthew, he's going to give us Matthew 13, starting in 44, verse 44, he's going to tell us two parables, two stories to help us understand what the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like. And I'm going to read them to you. They're very short. It says, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. So two stories Jesus tells about treasure. The first one is a man who's digging out working in his field and he's digging and he's digging and all of a sudden clunk his hoe or his shovel whatever hits something um, metal in the ground probably and it goes clunk and he stops and he thinks that's weird and he digs it up and it's um, an urn or a chest or something because people would bury their treasure out in their fields um, and he dug it up, and inside was probably some money, some coins. And he thought, uh-oh, and he looks around, and he makes sure that nobody has seen um, him dig it up. And quickly, he buries it again, because he doesn't want anybody to see it. And then he does a very interesting thing. He goes as quickly as he can, and he sells everything he has, and he buys the whole field where he's been digging just because there's a buried treasure in the ground. And he doesn't want anybody else to get the field where he found the treasure. So the treasure is worth everything he has to buy the field so he can own it. Okay, so remember that. The second story we read was about um, a merchant. A merchant is like a businessman, a, a person who owns a shop or um, buys and sells things. So the merchant is looking for fine pearls. And I wore my pearls so you could see what they're like. These are pearls. And pearls are very hard Real pearls are very hard to come by, so they're expensive. They come out of an oyster. So they live in um, the ocean, and divers have to go down and get them from the bottom of the ocean, and they're in a shell. And um, over it takes a long time for a pearl to form inside of an oyster shell. So um, when you get a pearl, it's a big deal. So... Um, the merchant was looking for fine pearls so that he could make jewelry out of them. And he found one that was bigger than the rest, that was perfectly formed and a good color and a good size. And he thought, oh, this is the pearl I've been looking for. It is a pearl of great value. And he also went and he sold everything he had, all the other things that he'd collected, all the other jewels, all the other um, valuables that he had in order to buy this one pearl. So two men that sell everything they have to get a treasure. So we have to think about that. What does it mean to sell everything you have, all the things, you know, not just a couple things, all the things you have to get one thing of great value, either one, one buried treasure in a field or one pearl of great price. Jesus says that's 
what the kingdom of God is. It's worth every other thing that you might think is important or valuable. The kingdom of God is worth every other thing that you might think you need or want. That's how, that's how valuable it is because God is the one in charge of it. God is our king. And he is the one, the only one, who keeps us safe from every, um, everything forever. And he's the only one who can tell us, don't worry, I have everything under control. Whether there's the coronavirus going around, whether um, you're worried about friends, whether you're worried about your parents, whether you're worried about um, school starting again, whatever you're worried about, God is the one who is taking care of it for us. So it's worth selling whatever you have. So you're a kid and you think, oh, I don't have anything to sell. What, what point does the story have for me? Well, you might not have belongings to sell, but you have things that are important to you that you hang on to. Um, for instance, maybe you think um, that hanging on to um, your friends and doing what they say is more important than looking to God first and the kingdom of heaven. That could be something that you do. Or um, wanting things your own way. That's another way that we hang on to things. So Jesus says, do follow God Seek him first, look for him first, and trust him to take care of you. And he will make sure that you have what you need to be safe and cared for, not just now, but forever. So maybe on your paper um, that you have in front of you, you could write down um, some things that you're worried about today, that you are anxious about, and... Um, you could pray about those things and or talk to your moms and dads about those things and um, think about how you could um, give those things away the way the men in our story gave away and sold all the things that they um, didn't need because they wanted to buy what was the most important thing. So maybe you could talk to your parents about how you could give away what's worrying you and hold on to the kingdom of God instead and trust God to be your king and to give you what you need so that you don't need to worry about um, whatever's bothering you today. Um, maybe last week you remember that we talked about um, the Lord's Prayer at the also found in Matthew 6. Did any of you... Um, read it or learn it or pray it with your families. I have a copy of it and I'm gonna read it with you today. Here it is, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, there it is again, the kingdom of God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. So today, I want you to remember um, four things. So it's kind of hard, four things. I want you to remember that God rules over heaven and on earth, and that's the kingdom of God. Two, Jesus teaches us to put God and his kingdom first. Three, God rules now and forever. And the last one, all who trust in Jesus as Savior belong to God and are accepted into his kingdom forever. 
I'm going to pray. Lord God, we love you. And we thank you that you um, sent Jesus to die for us so that we could have our sins forgiven and be part of your kingdom forever. Help us remember that Jesus taught us that the kingdom of God is our greatest treasure. Thank you, God, for loving us and taking care of us. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for being everywhere so that we never have to go anywhere without you. Help us to seek you first. In Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye, boys and girls. If you ever need me or want to ask me a question, you can have your moms and dads text me. I'm, I know they have my number somewhere, or you can have them email me. But I really do miss you, and I really do love you. So, bye.